Hi everyone, this is Marguerite and today I am talking about getting started with collage art. So this might go long, so what I think I'm going to do is break this down into two videos. Um, first I'm going to talk about the materials, um, scraps and tools and things that you use for making collages, and then I am going to talk about composition, putting them together and, and actually making a collage. Um, I'm making this video for anybody who's interested in doing collage art who has not done it before or for people who have done it but maybe need to find a little more interest in it again, find some spark of um, inspiration to get going because uh, you haven't done it in a while or you are not really that satisfied with what you've done in the past. So what I try to do when I make collages is do two things. I try to use up scraps that I have, that I've collected. And then the other thing, the other goal I have is to gain confidence in the compositions that I'm making. So let me show you first where I got started with collage art. I wanted to put together a book of of sewing notions and pieces of things that belonged to my grandmother. And I started to do this glue book and it took me over a year to complete. And even though I am happy with how it turned out and the results of it, it was a very, very difficult um, process for me to do. This, this spread, for example, took me more than two hours to do. And I really agonized over every, the placement of everything, the correct material, um, so on and so forth. So even though I completed this project, I didn't enjoy it. And I wanted to change that. So for the future, when I did something similar, I would have a much more positive experience. So. I used things in this in this book um, that have a, a great value to me and that are very meaningful. And so I wanted to step away from that and just go with things that are more random, day to day, and then just play around with with composition and putting things together in a glue book. So I started this little guy in a plain notebook that I had gotten from Target, uh, the bargain bin. And here I just kind of did things, did spreads kind of quickly without a whole lot of thought. And this one came together so much easier and so much faster. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. So I wanted to keep on doing these kinds of, of projects. So first I want to talk about materials. Um, you have scraps, of course. Uh, we'll get to more of that in a second. The other things you may need are double-sided tape. I, I do use this in addition to glue sticks. I did a, a, a basic internet search of what kind of the best glue sticks to use and everybody has different opinions about what works and what doesn't work. Um, these. I, I, I found a recommendation for this brand and I've been using it and I, I do like it a lot. I've had very good success with this. Things stick very nicely and they don't uh, come up later. Um, so I, I bought this on Amazon and you can buy, you know, blocks of 12 or whatever, pack of 12. Um, th this glue stick is made in Germany and I actually found these also in Lidl, in the, in the grocery store Lidl when I was in Europe. So I know that they're um, available pretty much in, you know, different parts of the world. So that's, this is a good one. I also use 3M, 3M, or is it Scotch? No, it's 3M um, glue stick and, and I'm happy with that one as well. I use, I use double-sided tape for heavier objects like this for example this is a paint chip it's a it's a bit thicker construction so i would use a double-sided tape on this guy but for the the thinner pieces of 
kind of magazine paper, a glue stick is just fine. Um, something else I use are rubber stamps from time to time. This is kind of an, an embellishment or you know something at the end, so you can use it with ink or with acrylic paint. Uh, that's that's something else. Um, what would you make your collages on? There's notebooks like this, for example. These are nice um, because they're 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 it's a book. You can fold it up and you know put it in a bookshelf. For this, I, it came with 60 pages, and I tore out one page after every three, I believe. Three pages, tear out one. Three pages, tear out one. Did that all the way through, and still you can see that there's, it got um, a little bit thick. So, but that works just fine. Other ideas you can do, let me move this out of the way. You can use index cards, for example. If you punch a hole in the corner, put a ring on it, then you can just make collages on small, on index cards, and then um, kind of use it this way. These are good because they're easy to carry, then you can you know, stick it in a bag, it's a good thing to travel with, um, that sort of thing. Another idea is playing cards. Uh, these, these are the same size as ATCs, which are artist trading cards. Uh, these ones I kind of did more in a vintage style, but um, these are a nice size to play with also, because you can use very small pieces of paper um, and you don't have a big commitment with a large space to do stuff. Another idea is what my friend Pamela does. She uses Rolodex cards. So if you can imagine a large um, Rolodex container filled with cards and you can just take one out and do one, you know, once a, once a, once a day, once a week, once a month, whatever, whenever you want to. And then after a while, you would have a whole collection of Rolodex cards, which is pretty cool. So what kinds of scraps are we looking for? So let me bring this back. So everybody has different tastes and different likes and you're drawn to different things. So of course, um, you know, you hold on to pieces of, of things that, that have an interest to you. Um, you can also hold on to things that have dates on them, which I think is pretty cool when I make my collage art because I, I basically want to know when I made something without having to write a date on it. So I look for things like receipts. Um, and I also made this little list of ideas that I uh, put on my website. So I will put a link to it. And if you're interested in having this list to help you come up with ideas of where to get paper scraps from, um, this might help. Um, where do you get ordinary paper scraps from? So your daily life, and this is where I started with receipts. Things like shopping, so groceries, and here I had an example of Trader Joe's monthly flyer. That's what these are. I really love these images that are in the flyer for the Trader Joe's grocery store. And I, I, I go through it and I cut out my little pieces and then I just set them aside. Discount retailers like Target, clothing tags, for example. Here is one from my kids, kid clothing. Hardware paint chips, I already showed you one of those. But, oh, but I do have one other example of paint chips. In this collage book, I started, let's look at the side first. I started this collage with this paint chip. This color, I just set it on my paper and then I took other pieces of scrap and put it around and just saw, tried to make it work. So this was the initial inspiration for this page. On this side, here's another paint chip over here. And this one is a little bit different because it has three colors plus an image. So this is kind of, it can be a help or even more of a hindrance to have 
more colors to work with plus an image but I really liked it so then again I just sort of added things and came up with another composition there thrift stores is another place um, if you have access to kids art which which I do because I have two small children post office I like the post office because you can get things like forms you can get stamps sheets of stamps and these are one cent stamps so this is 20 cents worth of stamps here are more one cent stamps um, these are great they're little pieces of art you know on an in, on an individual stamp and you can do some really great things with with stamps work I put work here I work from home so I don't have a concrete example but it all depends on where you work maybe this is a good idea maybe this is not a good idea I just threw that in there for something to think about next print media like magazines of course um, you can always find stuff free from the library so don't forget to check out your local resource catalogs from the mail solicited or unsolicited um, of course you can you know uh, send requests to companies to send you catalogs on things or you can just wait and see what comes in the mail because a lot of junk will come in the mail and you just go through it and take what interests you um, book pages from used books all right that's kind of self-explanatory maps maps is another great thing you can get them from the triple a you can get them from your local chamber of commerce um, here's one from my neighborhood whatever and my one of my kids um, used colored pencils to just kind of draw on it which I thought was also interesting um, because it adds an extra element of interest there and can be used if you you know tear out or cut out pieces okay um, instructions such as appliances mobile phone IKEA products I bought a lamp at IKEA not too long ago and inside came this reminder not to throw away things that have batteries in regular trash and the great thing about it is that it's written in I don't know how many languages so you could potentially tear out or have all these little bits of language and this is such a cool thing to have especially when they're in different alphabets I love it so I, I definitely hold on to things like this appliances uh, mobile phone here's something else that I recently got a new mobile phone and it came with this I like it also because they have again small fonts and uh, anything that has diagrams you know this is great stuff here too food packaging boxes or other food packaging tea bag envelopes chocolate or candy wrapper wrappers labels stickers so here's another little journal that I made with junk mail I assembled just junk mail everything that I got was junk mail and then I started collaging on top of the pieces that I put together so here I have a chocolate wrapper with um, paint chip and I have also this Pellegrino um, label and here is tea bag container bag a little paper envelope for example and then other odds and ends envelopes and postage stamps I already talked about postage stamps but I meant more in the respect of the ones that you peel off the edge of an envelope so you can tear off or pull up an old postage stamp also on security envelopes there's a lot of really great designs on these so I use these a lot in my backgrounds um, for things stickers any kind of sticker art scraps business cards old post-it notes photos wrapping paper wallpaper napkins with designs for example I think this was an Ikea 
thing also. Paper bags and washi tape. Okay, so those were my ideas. I think I'm gonna end this video here and then I will start another video and talk about the actual um, composition and making of collages. So I hope you will join me for that. Thanks for watching. Bye.